Hi there, it's Diane the Nursing Geek. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to me having my voice again. And no more head cold. So it's, we're already into January by a few days, but it's still plenty of time to be doing 2019 wrap up and 2020 goals, I think, because I've never really seen January 1st as that big of a deadline. My birthday's later this month. So my personal new year starts on January 24th. For me, that means the first three weeks are kind of just testing things out. Then my actual new year starts. That's one way that I look at it. I've talked about this before. I do goals rather than resolutions because goals you can always make progress on. Goals you can always adapt if they need to be shifted or tweaked or whatever. Resolutions tend to be very all or nothing, the way we look at them in our culture anyway. You're, you're going to do this and you either perfectly succeed or you completely fail. And those are the options. I don't find that particularly useful. So goals. Let's start with reading. So for reading, going by what I documented in my bullet journal, I read 36 books this year. Eight of them were indie published. That's an improvement over last year's um, number of indie. I don't think I was even tracking it really yet. I think even though my goal was set at 40, I'm calling the year a success anyway, because what that number doesn't include is all of the short stories and novellas that I listened to on LeVar Burton Reads. I feel like I've mentioned this before. If I have, please forgive me. But if I haven't, and you have not checked out LeVar Burton Reads, you absolutely should. It's, it's reading rainbow for grownups with sci-fi, fantasy, and horror. It's great. I didn't document those because they're short, although some are novellas. I mean, some of them took him a couple hours to read, like a couple of one hour episodes to cover. I'm going with that. Listening to a full season of him is at least one anthology, possibly two. And yeah, the number 40, there's nothing magic about it. The idea was I wanted to read more. And ultimately, what I wanted to read is more new stories from new to me authors. So, yeah, I'm calling that a success, whether the number actually matched or not. And I'm going to keep the number pretty much the same for 2020. Why not? It, it's useful to have a number of some sort to use as a landmark. And I would like to read more indie books, so more than eight. I want to do in December again if it runs again. And if there's something similar during the summer months, I may try to do another, like, I don't know if it's a readathon, reading challenge, whatever. Whatever types of things there are. If there's something that, particularly if it's focused on indie authors, sometime during the summer when I would actually have the time to do it assuming I actually even have time during the summer, but you know, whatever. I'd like to do another one because it, it was fun. Got me to, you know, do some exploring I might not have done otherwise. So those are pretty much my reading goals. Now let's talk about writing goals. My writing goals for 2019 were all based on the idea that my 2018 NaNoWriMo draft was going to be the first book of a trilogy. <laughs> Assuming any of that actually survives to be used at all, that is going to be book four of a, I don't know, quintilogy? Is that a word? It is now. Series of five. What I ended up doing in April's camp, I knew I was capturing backstory. I knew that was the big thing that I was missing, was a lot of this character's backstory. And I didn't know if it was going to end up being its own prequel or flashbacks. Well, among other things, that draft 
only 2,000 words out of the 30,000 survived when I tackled it all over again in November. It definitely needs to be the first book. And it definitely is going to take five. That was one way in which the goals just had to shift. The story needs to be something other than what I originally thought it needed to be. I also had the idea that I was just going to keep drafting, 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 and not complete the first book until, at the time I was thinking all three were drafted. I'm not really attached to that anymore. Um, I do want in 2020 to outline the remainder of the series. I have a rough outline in my head, but it's very rough and it's only in my head. That's one of my goals is to outline the rest of the series. That way I can be sure as I'm editing book one that anything that does need to be getting little bits of foreshadowing or little things planted can be. But I'm, I'm not going to worry as much about the fact that I could get to one of the later books and, oh my gosh, I, I forgot this, I, I messed up that. That happens to everybody. I will live if it happens. And thinking that I can't move forward with any of it until all of it is perfect is Emily Dickinson levels of just perfectionist procrastination. So I'm not going to do that. As far as this current draft itself, which is almost to the end, I would like to get it through at least one round of betas this year, preferably two. My thought is that by April's camp, I should be ready to pull together a really solid coherent second draft that would be beta ready. So that's that's sort of a, a shorter term goal. And uh, if I can get it through two rounds of betas this year, that would be even better because that would mean I could potentially be looking to publish it in 2021. That's not terribly unreasonable. I don't know how likely it is because I have a full-time job and life happens, so might not be that it turns around that quickly, but we'll see. I'm hoping. In the realm of publishing, if I, I'm pretty sure at this point that I will, will want to self-publish. I am too much of a control freak, I think. Um, also, from what I understand about the market at the moment, not that I've done a whole lot of research, but from what I have done, it actually seems like this sort of new adult fantasy would do better in indie publishing than traditional publishing right now. That could change. Me being a control freak is probably not going to change. So with that in mind, one of the other things I need to do in the writing realm this year is learn some things about traditional publishing. Right now, all that really looks like is listening to the Ingram Spark podcast from the first episode, which I am currently working on. Um, I did redeem the code that you get for winning NaNoWriMo to do the KDP webinar that's coming up next week or the week after, the 14th, I think it is. So hear what they have to say, learn what I can about them, just kind of get the lay of the land and learn the basics and start thinking about what route I would want to go and what the pros and cons are of all the different options. On the academic writing front, I did manage to hit one, one, and one this year one, well, at least one thing in progress, one thing in review, and one thing in press. I got one article published, book review. <laughs> Thank goodness the editor was such a kind-hearted and mentoring person because what I sent initially was not up to snuff at all. And my defense, it's hard to find a whole lot of peer-reviewed journal articles that are book reviews. 
in nursing anyway. A lot of the journals say they want to run them. Not that many people submit them, apparently. So it took a bit of doing to figure out what they wanted, and ultimately what it took was getting it rejected with a note explaining, try doing X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and uh, then you can resubmit, which I did, and then there were still edits, and but it got, it got printed. So got that done, and um, I have something else that's in process that should print in May. So that's the in review. And then I still have any number of things that are in progress. They're still in like data gathering stages, not even in writing stages yet. But so on the academic writing front, moving along there and hoping to continue maintaining that sort of one, one and one pace. So there's kind of always something coming along. Language learning. Well, when I found out that we we're going to Australia instead of Iceland this year, that kind of took away a lot of my impetus to continue learning Icelandic. As much as I like the language, if I'm not going to have any opportunities to use it, it becomes a lot harder to make myself actually do things like read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in Icelandic, which I still haven't done. It's still sitting on the shelf over there staring at me. Yeah, but I don't think that's going to happen. The language I do still want to continue pursuing though is American Sign Language. I'm hoping that I can take the second level class this summer at the American School for the Deaf. And in the meantime, I'm hoping to also work through some of the modules on the lifeprint.com website which are free ASL classes, quizzes and everything. Um, Cause I just, I really do love the language in general and yeah, I just, I want to get better at it. I actually applied to join a Facebook group for people who want people to practice ASL with. Me doing more anything on Facebook could very well be a sign of the apocalypse. I, I am aware, but it does seem like one of the better ways to find people to practice with because that's one of the things that holds me back there is I don't really have people to practice with. I have a lot of people I would like to learn sign language so that I could practice with them, but that I can't just magically make them want to do it. Last category would be YouTube goals. The past two years, my goal has been one video per week. Past two years, that has not happened. It averages out to about a video a week, but that's because of daily vlogs during things like NaNoWriMo and Camp NaNoWriMo. Yeah. My goal this year, once again, is let's try for some kind of consistency, and one a week does seem reasonable, despite the fact it keeps not happening. Something I've done to sort of try to help myself get into a better rhythm with that, and this may be another sign of the apocalypse, is I also joined the AuthorTube Facebook group. So that's two things I joined on Facebook, two reasons for me to actually log into Facebook more than like once every two weeks. If you haven't picked up on it yet, I am not a fan of Facebook. It drives my blood pressure through the roof every time I go on it for one reason or another. But if this is where I'm going to be able to make the connections I need to make to do these things I want to do, then I need to get over that and perhaps just do a little more yoga. One of the things that it looks like they're trying to do in the group is um, orchestrate some collabs of different types. Um, I'm not entirely sure what those would look like because some of the suggestions I've seen are really very different than anything I've seen done on YouTube before, which is awesome. Um, if I can participate in some of those, that would be great. I think that would help me learn to do better at this. Yeah. Oh, software. Yes. Another thing, another of my goals is I want to learn Lightworks. That's the other big free video editing software option out there. 
Um, I still don't really have the money to be throwing at more software, so I'm going to try that. It, and it's been used to edit major motion pictures. It should be plenty. I understand it's a lot less intuitive than OpenShot, but less intuitive doesn't mean you can't learn it. It just means it might take longer. So I'm hoping I can learn that and do a little better with editing my videos on here. Um, maybe even figure out how to do non-upside-down desktop view <laughs> videos. And figure out ways to bring in some of the content from my gaming channel. My gaming channel kind of took my energy, my YouTube energy, over there last year while I was in creative hibernation mode on this work in progress. That I need to cut back a bit on, and I do intend to. But one of the new things I'm going to be doing over there this year that will at least somewhat leak over to this channel is I'm working on building the set of this series in Minecraft. We'll see how that goes. <clears throat> uh, but I do think it'll be a useful exercise for me to just have. Some people build you know, little models on tables. I have a tiny apartment. I don't have a place to put a table with a, a model town. But I have Minecraft where I can build a model town. So some of that when I actually have actual structures or, or sections or whatever to show, I will probably um, show over here as well. I think that's about it. So I know everybody's probably all done with wrap-up videos and goal videos, but if not, and if you have anything you'd care to share about how your goals went for 2019 and what goals you've set for 2020, I would love to hear about them, uh, either in comments or at Discord. And for now, that's it. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.